Welcome. The purpose of this video is to learn new words that can be used during our Explorers unit. So our guiding question is, what new words can I use when discussing early exploration of the Americas? Your first word is motivation. Motivation means a reason for doing something. An example sentence could be, becoming rich and famous was a motivation for many of the early explorers. Think of a cheerleader motivating and cheering on the team players to do their best. Here's a funny motivational poster. If there is a better reason to paddle, I don't know what is. Another motivational poster says, who's awesome? You're awesome. Your next word is competition. Competition means a contest to see who is the best. An example sentence from our unit could be, there was a lot of competition between the European countries to claim land in the New World before the others. Here is a explorer competing and claiming the land before others from other countries could claim it. You can think of it as a race, a competition to see who will win. Your next word is empire. An empire is all the land that a nation controls. An example sentence from our unit would be, the three great kingdoms or empires of Ghana, Mali, and Songhai became more powerful by controlling trade. When I think of the word empire, I think of the greatest empire in all the world, and that would be the British Empire. In 1921, the world map looked like this and every red country was controlled by the British Empire. Navigation. The word navigation means how you know where you are going. An example sentence could be, the sextant was one of the new tools used for navigation that helped sailors locate where they were on the sea. Think of a ship and a big question mark. Where are you going in the middle of the ocean? And when you're sailing, that's a very difficult thing because there are no roads and you're just looking at yourself in the middle of, an, of open waters. So navigation is using instruments like a sextant. Here is one of my heroes, Laura Decker, using a sextant to actually measure where she is in relation to the horizon. You can also use stars and other charts to help navigate you in the water. The next word is obstacle. An obstacle is a thing that blocks one's way or prevents or hinders progress. Think of it as a, a wall and you have to get over that obstacle in order to achieve something. An example sentence could be, one of the major obstacles the sailors faced was disease and starvation. Here's Laura Decker's sailboat, the guppy, again. Think of the obstacles she may face while she's sailing. Obviously, rough weather, storms, rogue waves. You can think of loneliness out on the water, her boat flipping or running aground, starvation, and even falling off of your boat is an obstacle that you must overcome and constantly prevent from happening while you're sailing. Interaction is your next vocabulary word. Interaction means an exchange of ideas or products. An example sentence could be, the interaction between the Native Americans and the explorers was diverse, ranging from friendly welcomes to deadly attacks. Here is a painting showing the interaction between the Europeans and the Native Americans. Clearly they're exchanging or interacting with one another through perhaps hand motions, gestures, and um, words, even though they didn't speak the same language, I'm sure they were interacting with one another. Here is the conquistadors about to interact with the Native Americans. Not as friendly there. And interaction can also be quite simply uh, a conversation between two people. Conquest. Conquest means when one society takes over another society. 
an example sentence could be, the conquest of North and South America was important to the countries of Spain, France, England, and Portugal. When I think of the word conquest, I go back to medieval times and when different societies would fight with one another and take over another society. Obviously, the flag and flying the society's flag at the castle would be a way of showing that the conquest has been achieved. You can also think of capture the flag as an idea of conquest. Here is um, the Perry Sledge Party posing with flags at the North Pole in April 1909, and their conquest to reach the North Pole was achieved. And for our purposes, we're looking at North and South America in relation to the countries who wanted them and they um, colonized these parts. So you can see the conquest of the different land masses in North and South America by the different countries. Check out how much land Spain had and how much land France had and how little land Britain had at the time. It's very interesting to see. Indigenous is another word that you need to be familiar with. Indigenous means natural to an area. It's a describing word, so we can use indigenous with things as well as people. Here's an example sentence. Coffee was a plant indigenous to the Americas. You can see this map here of where coffee is grown. So indigenous coffee. We can also think of indigenous people and indigenous animals. Here's just a simple map of uh, Australia. You can see that the kangaroo is indigenous to Australia. The koala is indigenous to Australia, as well as the, the native there. He is an aborigine, and aborigines are indigenous to Australia. Your last word is infectious. Infectious is another word for contagious, as in a disease. An example sentence would be, smallpox was, a, was an infectious disease and killed many Native Americans when the Europeans arrived. We deal with infectious disease with the common cold and of course the flu. These are contagious. And here's just a picture of Native American suffering from an infectious disease that they most likely got from the Europeans.